This is Peshawar in northern Pakistan, a day's journey from the great Himalaya range. It was here in Peshawar, 30 years ago, that a long time geological mystery unexpectedly surfaced. It all began at the University of Peshawar, where a geology student named Kasim John was pondering his future. He sought out his professor for advice. He took me to this map, showed me, pointed out to this blank area and said here is a big chunk of Pakistan territory in the northwest Himalaya which has not been previously mapped. Go there, you can work for all your life there until you die. What Kazim John didn't know was that his quest would lead him to a mountain unlike any other mountain on earth. A mountain that would shed new light on that great unsolved geological mystery. What makes a mountain grow? Kazim John's journey took him along the Karakoram Highway. For thousands of years, travelers from India and neighboring countries had converged on this part of Pakistan on their journey northward. The Karakoram Highway was the only road that would lead Kasim into the Great Himalaya Range. It was slow going on this narrow highway, heavily plied by trucks bound for China. Heading north, the land quickly became steeper and more unstable. Entire villages were perched atop freshly gouged landslides, ready to spill into the river far below. The road itself was extremely precarious. It clung to a cliff above the steep gorge of one of the Earth's most important rivers, the mighty Indus. This river once supported one of the great cultures of the ancient world, the Indus Valley Civilization. Today, the Indus continues to bring life-giving water to all of Pakistan. When Kazim John reached the blank spot on his geologic map, everything changed. This was Kohistan, and it was a most formidable place. In spite of the torrents of water crashing through the landscape, Kasim thought of it as a mountain desert. He immediately noticed that the rocks of Kohistan were completely unlike anything he had seen on his journey. And sticking up above Kohistan was an enormous and very strange mountain. People called it Nanga Parbat, Kashmiri words for naked mountain. Its sides were so steep that snow did not blanket it completely. At 26,660 feet tall, it was the ninth highest mountain in the world. Kasim's strong impression was that this mountain was completely out of step with the surrounding area. For one thing, it was oriented north-south instead of east-west like all the other Himalayan mountains. And it was so much higher than the Kohistan terrain around it. But even though Nanga Parbat was intriguing to Kasim Jam, figuring out the mountain's geology was not his priority. His priority was Kohistan, and it was complicated enough. Geologically, this area is very complex, not only from the processes which have contributed to its formation, but also from the point of view of performing geological studies. The relief is very high. It's the most highest relief we have in the world. And it is very difficult to cover a lot of ground
Filling the hole in the geologic map would take years of trekking in this difficult terrain, crossing and recrossing these racing rivers. Kasim Jan would have to draw in all the mountains, rivers and fault lines he found in unmapped Kohistan. And he'd have to note where one type of rock ended and the next began. But only after taking hundreds of rock samples back to the lab for analysis. Kasim's teacher was right. This could take a lifetime. Yeah, this is all quirks. Logistically, too, the area has many complications. Neither guest houses nor hotels are available. You can camp, but then you need a lot of supplies and porters, so it's, it becomes expensive. Medical facilities are very poor in the area. Road conditions are not good. Um, and under these circumstances, geological studies are not easy to be carried out. The good thing about the area, however, is that the people are very helpful and hospitable. And the scenery is fantastic, despite that it is a mountain desert. So, Kasim Jan immersed himself in Kohistan. He could only hope that someone else would come along to help make sense of Nanga Parbat. What he didn't guess was that the help would be coming from another legendary mountain range, the Alps. While Kasim Jan toiled in the Himalayas, a geologist named Arnaud Peche from Joseph Fourier University was working in the French Alps. Like Cassine, Arnaud was the product of a mountainous region. Having grown up in the Alps, he was well acquainted with the mountain's look and feel, their structure. As a young man deciding on a field of study, Arnaud concluded that structural geology would suit him well. The idea was to have a work where you combine work outside and work in the lab, uh, where you can be in, in mountain. I was in mountaineer and I was liking to climb, so it was a good way to join the two things, climbing and intellectual work. For me, my main instrument is a compass. I have to take a lot of measurement. Using this tiny instrument, Arnaud measures the orientation and relationships of rocks. This lets him generalize to the larger mountain, figuring out if its rocks are bent or flat, turned sideways or sticking up. Arnaud loved working in his own backyard but like all mountain geologists, he began to hear the call of the greatest mountain range of them all, the Himalayas. It was only a matter of time before Arnaud was en route to Pakistan. As the plane approached the border between Pakistan and China, high peaks suddenly loomed up directly in its flight path. This was truly the roof of the world. Clustered here are more high mountains in one place than anywhere else on Earth. They are part of the Karakoram Range. The highest of these high peaks is K2, 
At 28,250 feet, K2 is the second highest mountain in the world after Mount Everest in Nepal. Here too stands the majestic Rakaposhi. According to local folklore, Rakaposhi's high peak is inhabited by spirits that dwell in fairy castles. Just when it seemed the peaks had finally run out, a huge mountain, perhaps the biggest mountain in the world in terms of sheer bulk, appeared at the window. It was Nanga Parbat. The mountain had a tremendous presence, like a gigantic, sprawling creature raising up its massive, bulky head. Right away, our nose saw that there was something very strange about the way Nanga Parbat was situated. The way it stood, off by itself and turned sideways to the rest of the Himalayas, beckoned our no to take a closer look. Once on the ground, Arnaud followed the legendary Old Silk Road south from China. Through this remote and magical land had journeyed the silk traders of antiquity, and pilgrims, conquerors, and kings. Above them all towered the high, jagged peaks. Studying those peaks, what impressed Arnaud about the Himalayas was that the mountains lined up in neat, regular rows, all the way from Pakistan through India and Nepal, Tibet and Bhutan. So far, the geology of this place seemed straightforward and easy to picture. But that was about to change. Arnaud followed the Silk Road toward the fabled Valley of Hunza. Along the way, the sacred rocks of Hunza told the stories of 2,000 years of travelers. High above stood the 700-year-old Altit Fort. Then the mountains opened up, and falling away below was the green valley of Hunza. It was a refreshing sight to the road-weary traveler. Legend had it that the people of Hunza never fell ill and lived exceptionally long lives. They grew wheat here and maize and apricots. Their terraces climbed straight up the mountain sides. For irrigation, they siphoned water from the ends of melting glaciers. Leaving Hunza behind, Finally, Arnaud reached Nanga Parbat. And from the ground, the mountain looked every bit as peculiar as it had from the air. Suddenly, when you arrive here, everything is different. The regular pattern of the rest of the Himalayas had abruptly ended. At Nanga Parbat, the entire range made a giant sweeping curve. When you arrive to Nanga Parbat, you have this bending of the belt, and this makes the things very particular and maybe more difficult to, to understand, to, to explain. Difficult, yes. But that bend in the Himalayas would prove to be a major clue to the mystery of Nanga Parbat's formation.